Wing Hao, sidekick to the Crimson Avenger, offers a fascinating lens through which to view the evolution of comic book sidekicks, cultural representation in media, and the nuances of heroism. Today we're talking about Wing Hao, one of DC's first sidekicks, and, at the same time, about minority groups in comics. That's right, it's that kind of video. Before we begin, remember to leave a like on the video if you enjoy it, and if you like me and what I'm doing here, go ahead and subscribe. So, to the newbies, welcome, and to the oldies, welcome back. Let's talk about DC Comics. Wing Hao debuted during a time when comic books were growing as popular entertainment in America. His character was conceived as the valet and later crime-fighting partner to the Crimson Avenger, Lee Travis, one of DC's earliest masked vigilantes. The portrayal of Wing, however, was initially marred by the racial stereotypes prevalent during the era. You see, in the early days of comic books, minorities were often depicted through negative stereotypes. They were rarely the heroes, instead appearing as sidekicks, villains, or background characters with derogatory traits. For example, African American characters were drawn with exaggerated features and heavy accents, while Native American characters were often portrayed as savages or shamans. Asian characters, such as the villainous Fu Manchu and the bumbling detective Charlie Chan, embodied the yellow peril stereotype, painting Asians as mysterious and dangerous outsiders. These portrayals mirrored and reinforced social prejudices of the time. Wing, by extension, was often depicted with exaggerated features and pidgin English, which was a common but very, very regrettable trend in the portrayal of Asian characters in early American comics. When we first meet Wing, admittedly nestled between a few other stories that really prove my point about the perception of minority groups, it's a very brief appearance. He's the Crimson Avengers valet, he speaks in broken English, and he's in a whopping total of two panels. Frankly, it explains the length of his initial role pretty succinctly. He's not an important player in the narrative, he's a foreign servant. Full stop. Over time, Wing's character underwent significant transformations. He evolved from a background figure often used for comedic relief into a more competent and respected hero in his own right. This shift mirrors broader changes in society and the comic book industry's slowly growing awareness and sensitivity towards racial and ethnic representation. His first foray into the position of sidekick occurred in 1942. Though this was a step in the right direction, he was still presented in ways that were problematic. He was still a goofy sidekick, and those same exaggerated features remained. Interestingly, Wing Hao's evolution is also emblematic of the changing role of sidekicks in comic books. Early sidekicks such as Batman's Robin or Green Arrow's Speedy were designed to attract younger readers, serving as characters with whom they could identify. They were less experienced and often served as a narrative device to highlight the prowess of the heroes they accompanied. However, as comics evolved, so did the roles of these sidekicks. They began to be portrayed as essential partners in crime-fighting endeavors rather than mere apprentices or comic relief. Wing Hao's character development, particularly after World War II, reflects this shift. He was shown taking on more responsibility and engaging in serious combat, symbolizing his growth from a background piece to a character of depth. The civil rights movement of the 1950s and 1960s marked a turning point in many areas of American society, including, of course, comic books. Creators began to question the ethics of the stereotypical portrayals and started to introduce minority characters with more dignity. Marvel Comics, in particular, introduced characters such as Black Panther, the first black superhero in mainstream American comics. The Silver Age brought about a new wave of Asian superheroes, too. Characters such as Marvel's Shang-Chi, who debuted in 1973 and marked a significant departure from previous depictions. Shang-Chi was crafted as a skilled martial artist and complex hero, though not entirely free from the cliches of martial arts mystique that typified Western perceptions of Asian cultures. It's right after this point in DC's Bronze Age that Wing Hao gets some genuine development, indicating an improving effort at representation. He's explained to have been a Chinese immigrant from Hankou, part of what's now Wuhan. 
So, as World War II began to kick off, including with a notable invasion of his homeland, he felt a deep set sadness, making his story more complex and sympathetic. But Wing is resilient, even at his fairly young age, and a professional, too, so he presses on. He helps Lee Travis, first as a valet with knowledge and skill that may actually surpass Lee's in some respects before becoming his sidekick. I enjoy seeing the evolution here, because I feel like it serves as a strong litmus test for how public perception had shifted over the course of 1938 into the mid-80s. It's also shown that Wing, on an adventure with the Crimson Avenger, did one of the most heroic things you can do. He sacrificed his life in the name of others. Wing Howe was made absent from the page for decades, as comics became ever-changing and progressive. As we moved into the late 20th and early 21st centuries, the push for diversity and representation in comic books gained momentum. This period saw the introduction of heroes and heroines of various ethnic backgrounds, sexual orientations, and identities. Characters like Kamala Khan, aka Miss Marvel, a Pakistani-American teenager, Miles Morales, a black Hispanic Spider-Man, and the introduction of LGBTQ plus characters like Batwoman signaled a shift towards a more inclusive approach in comic book storytelling. DC's Cassandra Cain and Marvel's Amadeus Cho are examples of Asian characters, specifically, who are not defined solely by their ethnicity, but are well-rounded characters with their own unique stories and struggles. Contemporary comics also explore themes of identity, racism, and the immigrant experience, often with a nuance and sensitivity that earlier comics lacked. We never see heads nor tails of wing until recently, in last year's story, Stargirl, The Lost Children. Wing is used pretty effectively as the most visible piece of a long hidden puzzle. It seems that sidekicks from throughout time have been taken and erased from public memory as they arrive on the mysterious Orphan Island. While clearly very young in the fresh continuity of Prime Earth, Wing Howe is shown to be tactical, bright, and an automatic leader. While he himself still fits into the sidekick category, there isn't a single doubt that he could hold his own and lead the charge under the right circumstances. But not to get too hung up on this one story, it's explained near the conclusion that Wing Howe was taken via time travel just before his heroic sacrifice, and he needs to return to that point because that day still needs saving. Wing Howe stands as a prime example of the complex interplay between culture, media representation, and the archetype of the superhero sidekick. While his early portrayals undoubtedly reflect the prejudices of their time, his character also represents a narrative of progress and redemption, both for himself and for the comic book industry. The future of minority representation in comic books looks promising, but requires continuous effort and genuine engagement with minority communities. It involves not only creating diverse characters, but also ensuring that the creators behind these stories are diverse themselves. This diversity in creativity can lead to richer, more authentic storytelling as we move away from the regrettable and ultimately derogatory representation of the Golden Age. Comic books have moved from reinforcing stereotypes to challenging them, from depicting minorities as the other to celebrating them as heroes. As we continue to strive for a more inclusive society, the evolution of minority representation in comics serves as both a mirror and a model, even if it isn't always pretty, reminding us of the power of storytelling in shaping our understanding of ourselves and others. And that's where we'll leave our story for now. If you really enjoyed the video, hopefully enough to have left a like and subscribed, you'll be happy to know that we also have a video available here on the Crimson Avenger, the bigger half of this Mystery Man era duo. Thanks for sticking with us. I'll see you in the next one.